After flying for hours over iced mountain ranges and glaciers, Anchorage suddenly appears on the flat tundra like a jewel in the golden light. From the air, Anchorage appeared to be isolated, fringed by sea, flat green tundra and more snowy mountain ranges. But on closer inspection, it sits comfortably between this unfriendly landscape as a small but very modern city. There are arcades of shopping with many local artefacts made by the Inuit to tempt the tourists. It's a colourful city with flowers cascading from every corner, perhaps to compensate for seven months of ice and snow. The famous Salmon Run is well advertised with sculptural replicas strategically placed. But if you wander too far in this tiny town, the emptiness of this vast wilderness becomes all too apparent. I'm still in Alaska at Soldotna, where ducks can run on water at 100 miles an hour. And the Lewins teach their young all the tricks of survival. We took one of the lake boats and just glided around to see all the wildlife. Now Soldotna was a four hour drive after arriving in the middle of the night at Anchorage and we wondered what we had struck when we arrived at 4am with dirt road, rough wooden cabins and nobody around. But in the morning we had woken to a serene paradise.
Next week, we go to a conference in Cobden Miniature Railway. Join me. What's your name? It's John. John Truffmark. Yeah, how long have you been doing it, John? Uh, 32 years. Oh, right. You've always lived here at uh, Sol No, No, you? actually, I just moved up here a year and a half ago. Where were been, you before? Uh, Michigan. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, Michigan. Well, I think you're very clever. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Mr. and the owner. Hello. Hello. Yeah. The creator. <laughs> Got you. I'm just overwhelmed with all. This is the beginning of a carousel, and they're wood, they're not bronze, they're painted wood. I'm going to a party this Friday night. I don't care if there's no girl in sight. I'm in the mood for a drink or two or three. Yes, indeed. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to drink that sparkling wine I'm gonna be just fine I brought my own Well I've got be one home Bursting out of my truck I'm gonna have a good time I'm gonna drink that sparkly wine I'm gonna be just fine Cause I brought my own I've got BYO Bursting out the truck All prepared to suck, suck, suck Cause I'm in the mood to drink A very great deal indeed Yes indeed There's enough for ten strokes of long We'll drink till dawn At half past four Finish up on the kitchen floor, I brought my own. Today, with a guide, we fish from a boat with at least 200 boats on the Kenai River. We will fish for king salmon. There are hundreds of people lined all the way down the river in waders fishing for the sockeye salmon on the edges. We fish four from the boat and a Dolly Parton, quite a small fish, was soon in our bag. Not a lot of people were catching fish, but we knew from this morning's news Thousands of salmon were beneath us seeking to spawn and die. They count them with an automatic counter when they enter the river from the sea. I was intrigued with all the ski-type log cabins on the whole of the riverfront for miles down the river. Apparently, you can buy 25 feet by 55 feet of recreation land for this purpose, all with a tinny tied up in front. You're only able to catch one king salmon per day and two a season. You can catch three sockeye salmon a day. There you go. Excuse me. Then the other lass caught a huge king and it took quite a while to land him. We all stop and help when this happens. <laughs> Later in the day, I caught a large king salmon. The guide said I could let it go and catch a bigger one, and that if I kept it, I had to stop fishing. But I kept it. I was pretty pleased with myself, 
as I had managed to catch the biggest fish I had ever caught. The army of fishermen was imposing and enough to scare any self-respecting fish away, but I guess they will die soon anyway. After a great fish meal overlooking the tranquil lake, watching the ducks with all their brood fossicking for food, I couldn't resist the further opportunities, so we hauled out a canoe and followed the loons as they taught their baby to dive. We ended up with a swim and off to bed at 11.30. It's hard to go to bed when it's still daylight.
The drive from Soldotna to Seward is a hundred miles of wildlife in a natural wilderness with a backdrop of mysteriously pinnacled white-tipped mountains. Seward is settled in the head of the Kenai Fjord, totally overpowered by the huge snow-capped mountain range. In 1964, a tsunami totally wiped out this small fishing village of Seward and the whole area. It is over 1,000 feet deep at this marina with a very rugged seafloor. The fishermen are busily weighing in their morning's catch of halibut. Just one is enough to feed a whole family for a week. Sea otters were sleeping as they lay in the sea, sometimes holding hands. We stopped for a while next to a huge growling and exploding glacier, shedding bits which thundered into the bay. The harbour seals preferred to sunbake on the icebergs, all very watchful at our approach. whale, as long as our boat, kept us company, lazily flapping at the sea. The stellar seals ignored us as they swam and lazed in the sun. Gotta be safe. Safe. <laughs> the day is bright sunshine without a cloud, but the water is a faded, dull, opaque green, apparently from melting icebergs. <music> Thus, this magic boat trip continued with the tiny odd-faced puffins peering at us from their craggy rocky place.
long have you lived here? I've lived here 20 years. You live actually at Cooper's Landing? Uh-huh. Yeah. I live just down the road. Do you? Oh, that's yeah. lovely. When I first uh, moved here, I lived in Anchorage, and I lived in a little log cabin for a case of beer a month. Did you? <laughs> oh, that was 30 years ago. Uh -huh. Then I went back to Texas, and it was 83 when I came back, but yeah. I just never got over the beauty. No. What's it like in the winter? It's very slow and soft and quiet. It's an inside job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's time for hibernation and figuring out who you are all the Get the cabin cleaned. <laughs> well, then you, well, you go crazy and then you cry and you get over it and you get up and do something about it, just like everybody else. <laughs> uh, It's nice to be afloat on board a little boat watching on the street. How long will we be out? Um, oh, well, six and a half hours till we get back here. So oh, well, hours. how far down the river did we go? We're going to go 15 miles on the river and we got five miles on the lake, so 20 miles total. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, do we have any um, really rough water? <laughs> well, we're going to get into some class two rapids. Uh, it's nice and splashy, stand the boat up a little bit. No recirculating hydraulics though, that's where you cross over to class three. Yeah. But it is cold water, so a lot of people will rate it as class three because if you took a swim, it'd be, be hard pressed to get out without being shivering. And, <laughs> yeah. So you don't turn the boat over often? Uh, no, no. <laughs> the temperature... Keep walking. Here's our mighty craft. We're gonna hold up at the top of the dock here. And yeah, we don't we don't turn the boat over. <laughs> um, we're off and running. All right. So how deep is this river? Oh, it's uh, average is about eight foot deep. <laughs> Flying low. Where's the yep. lowest at that, huh? Yeah, really. Hard to beat. The bald eagles are definitely not an endangered species up here. There was this line of people, all fishing, and people were getting jigs in their face and you know, hooks in their. Hey, John. Oh yeah. Depends on what you're inclined towards. If you really like fishing, best red salmon fishing. Is Boats going by. Welcome to God's country. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Life for the life for me, oh, I love to sail on the open sea and I never, never, never do a thing about the weather because the weather never, never does a thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna He's get All right, I am the pirate king, ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, rather the pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be the pirate king. It's Alaska, Alaska. At last the day has arrived. We are fishing for salmon with grizzly bears. The only way to get there was a float plane. No roads to this area of the Katmai Peninsula. So we lined up early at a tiny lake in Soldotna and parked on the edge are three de Havilland seaplanes. All three planes took off more or less together. We flew in tandem over picturesque houses and noticed that lakes almost joined everywhere.
we passed over Cook Inlet and noticed the oil rigs pumping away. We landed on one of the big river tundra lakes under the eye of the towering Mount McKinley spires. We were met by a guide in a zodiac and in a minute we were entranced with playful bears just a few feet away. It was scary and wonderful being so close to such wild, untamed creatures. The waters are teeming with red sockeye salmon. They're chasing around in the shallow waters, ready to spawn and die. They have come into the river system in the thousands from the sea to their birthplace. This corner is where the wild bears fish. We have been directed to stand if they get too close, so we are collectively larger and more of a threat for them. It is an incredible and scary feeling to be almost inches away from such a predator. We have heard of several unsuspecting joggers and fishermen who recently died at their hand. We are just a meal for them, nothing more. A young grizzly decided to play with the anchor rope and everyone held their breath. Another young one decided to come aboard and the guide hastily pushed us very carefully away. The baby wasn't the problem, but the huge angry mother would be. The boats took turns in being close to shore where the fish were piled together in the shallow water. Our guide took us close to shore, but I noticed a couple of the guides were very reluctant to take their passengers so close. They didn't want the responsibility. One grizzly mother launched herself into the water from a convenient rock and promptly sprayed water all over us. She caught several fish this way. Our fishing license permits us to catch three sockeye salmon today, but I can't put my camera down. I wish to get as much footage as I can at such close quarters. Later in the day, a huge grizzly arrived with three small cubs and all the other bears fled. She inspected us very carefully, then ignored us and fished for her share of fish. The cubs were delightful, inspecting and smelling everything. <laughs>
There are stories to tell, to tell. There are bears and men and wives. Open your eyes. Come inside. Relax, girl. It's a last girl. It's a last girl. At the very south of the Kenai Peninsula lies Homer, called the Halibut Fishing Capital. Homer consists of a few houses on the foreshore and a peninsula about 100 metres wide and about one kilometre long, jutting straight out into the sea. Crammed on this, several caravan parks and many shops and restaurants all with their feet dangling in the ocean, with tsunami possibilities hanging over their head. This place is alive with residents and tourists, fishing, shopping and dining, overlooking this narrow piece of land. And a marina, a, a large marina. Joy and adventure, are still alive and well, and very friendly. Or that one, huh? Or that one. Or that one, huh? Or that one. I spotted an unusual caravan and invited myself in to film it. Do you live up here, do you? Did you build this yourself? I did. Cut it off at the window sills. Yes. And then built the top on it. Uh, it'd give us more room up above. Oh, I see. Um, would it be a real intrusion yeah, if I filmed in inside it a little? Um, and tell me where you've... Oh, wow, isn't it great? Watch your head there. It's... No. So how far have you been in it? Well, how far is it to California and back? About 5,000 miles down there? 3,500 miles. And how many of you live in here? The two of them now, although when they built it, they had three little boys that slept up here. Well, they slept <laughs> up the top there, did they? Yeah. That's, that's absolutely fabulous. And look at all your artifacts and, and your, your kite and... <laughs> And what, that's the uh, master bedroom upstairs? Right. And downstairs and is another, bathroom. it's a bathroom, is it? Right. And you're totally self sufficient. You've even got a, a stove. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your microwave. Okay, oh, now you computer. wash up, there's the, the sink over there. How do you like this blowy spot here? We, well, we own this piece of property, and he stayed all winter here, and it's nothing compared to winter. Now, what do you Very mean cool. by by property. Is that this little bit that yeah. you're on? Yeah, the little, from the, the RV from park the, right here. From this little grey building down to the to first log. big log. Down there. <laughs> yeah. Do you rent to all the others that intrude on your spot? Mm -hmm. You do? Oh, I see. I, uh, what would you pay for some? I know we I, I we fished on the Kenai River yesterday and you can buy a recreation block of land 55 feet by 25 and put something on there. But that costs a fair bit. What was a what would it cost here? Well, if you're talking about staying here for the summer or for No, I mean on owning owning the land. Oh. Well, I'm just curious about, you know, what your uh, property's worth here. Well, this one's worth a lot because I wouldn't sell it. Well, it like, <laughs> no, but what is a lot? Well, tell me what you paid for it then. Well, there's one down there that they're asking 90 for. 90, 90, 90 what? 90,000. Okay. 
I saw a cafe up there with a tsunami sign on it. Now, <laughs> that's true. That's a risky take. So you don't worry, yeah, about that. Yeah, I have a little radio that we keep on, a little weather radio that's supposed to alert us. There. Would there be a traffic jam? You'd never oh, get yeah. off it. I'm not worried about it. There's too many other ways to die. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Uh, I, who are you? Please tell me for this. Um, for the camera. Who am I? Dan yeah. Young. Yeah. And my I, wife Pam. And, okay. Hi. Hello. I think I, I think I got you in there. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm Dan's mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm his father. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Dean Young. Uh, and you live in? We live in Washington State, but we come up here every year. We're building a cabin up north of Anchorage, about a hundred miles. I, uh, it's just so lovely here. We've been staying in Soldotna. This is your cabin for yes, uh -huh. Today it's sunny, warm and glorious, but there is much evidence of previous very violent weather. Wild waves probably roll right over this tiny peninsula with a good storm.